So let's go over and look at what the requirements are. Uh, we have in column A, in the division field, we have various text values. Some of them are unique, some of them repeat. And what we want to do is take the unique values from this field, put it over here, and then it will attach to a data validation drop-down list and we'll see the unique values. And then when something changes over here, we want that to also be reflected ultimately in the drop-down list. Now, Layla has a formula here. Uh, this is the formula that she uses uh, to look below and take the values from here. Now, this video, uh, Layla made this video back on January 3rd, and this is her data. Uh, so watch her video as well, because the way she solved it, we'll see that in a couple of minutes, was very, very interesting. But let's jump over to, let's not forget this. Whenever you build something, there are a bunch of questions that you should always ask. It can save so much time and avoid so many errors. So maybe pause the video and look at that. But uh, let's jump to this part before we get into all the different solutions. Uh, <laughs> you often hear about this where you have fast, good, and cheap. And of those three things, you can only really pick two unless you're very lucky. Now, how does this compare to the different solutions for this video? Well, we in Excel, we have light uh, for the calculation speed and how much space it takes up. Dynamic, is it instant? Uh, if it requires a refresh, then it's not fully dynamic. And then we have simple to understand and fast to create. So that's sort of the three things we can pick two of them. So let's start off and look at how Mr. Excel solved this. Uh, Mr. Excel could solve it in any way. I mean, he's a sort of a genius in Excel, but he emphasizes built-in features, advanced filter, pivot table and remove duplicates. It's all very uh, built-in things in Excel up on the ribbon and it can be taught to people very, very quickly. So let's go here and scroll up and uh, we'll go like this and say insert pivot table, uh, existing worksheet, we'll click right there. And we're just gonna go like that and say, okay. And then the, the fields, the pivot table fields are over to the side. I'm just gonna drag it over here so we can see it and take the division, put it into the rows, and watch what happens. It creates a unique list automatically. And then right click, we don't wanna see remove grand total. And let's look up here at Layla's data validation formula, and sure enough, we see everything in there. Now, I'm gonna change one of these to um, a different text. You see how it's not in here yet, uh, because we have to refresh the pivot. So it's very quick to create this. Uh, now we see coffee, and coffee will be up here but it does require that refresh. Now, let's look at Oz. Oz suggests that we should use Power Query, and Power Query is an amazing feature in Excel that a lot of people still don't know about. And in Excel 2016, it's a built-in feature. So let's look at how we can really quickly do this with Power Query. I'm gonna click inside this table. Uh, you see up here at the top, it says design. So this is a table. Uh, we're gonna say, there's a couple different ways to do this, but uh, over here on data, bring this data into Power Query. So what you're seeing here, what it's just loading, uh, this is the query editor. And what we wanna do is go over to Transform and say Group By. When we do a Group By query, it actually removes all the duplicates because it's aggregating. So we go like this, we say by Group By Division, click OK. And we don't really care about how many there are, we just wanna get this back in Excel. So I'll go like this and say Remove. And now go back to home, close and load to, and we're gonna put it existing worksheet, click this and put it right there. So this is very simple and it's, it's pretty quick as well. And it's gonna populate this. And now here at the top, look at Layla's dropdown list and sure we see it. So let's change one of these. I'm gonna change uh, this one to Friday. It's not Friday yet, but it will be. And then go over here and we're gonna refresh this and then it's Friday's there and it appears in the dropdown. So that's a very interesting way to do it. Uh, Get and Transform is amazing, so powerful for cleaning up and rotating and fixing your data. Okay, let's keep going here. And now we're gonna look at formulas. So we've got two formula solutions and they belong over here. I would say it's pretty tough sell to say that they're simple to understand and fast to create, but they're definitely light. They don't take up much space. Uh, and they're completely dynamic. So we have now these two factors, light and dynamic. Let's go over and look at, uh, we'll start off with Mike's solution. So Mike Gervin from Excel is fun. We go in here and the formula is quite long. That's the, maybe the downside here, but uh, you have to drag this down a ways. But really the magic is inside of the frequency part of this formula. Uh, 
having a condition and the matching, but it does take some time to understand how this works. So I've got links for all of these videos and their posts uh, over here as well. You can see all these um, the links, but uh, this is a good way to do it. Uh, it's kind of a classic way to do it that's been around for a long time. One thing to, to think about is the expanding rows range. Whenever you have an expanding range, like we see in here, it's okay in a small data set, but it, uh, if you drag this down thousands of rows, from my experiences, it's kind of slow. It slows things down a bit, but it's definitely a good way to do it. Now, let's go over to Layla's solution. She did the same kind of thing. It is completely dynamic, but look at her formula. It's quite a bit shorter. Now, the trick here is the complexity of understanding the count if where it has an expanding range, and it doesn't have a single criteria. The criteria is all the values in the division uh, field, the, the division field of the table. So that's kind of the trick there. It takes some more time to understand it, but it's a great solution. It's a much shorter formula, and uh, you just put it into one cell, and you drag it down, and it works very nicely here. So let's just test this. Let's put wine, and it instantly appears here in our list, and then in the dropdown, it's there as well. So definitely worth considering uh, that kind of solution. Now, mine is quite a bit different. But I sometimes prefer this. I could do any of these solutions, right, depending on the circumstances. But uh, I think that sometimes build it for the person that's going to be maintaining the model. Uh, so mine is, is dynamic. And I think it's simple to understand and fast to create, but it's not light. It is definitely the heaviest solutions solution of all the solutions we're going to see here. So go over here and scroll to the top. And uh, we're just going to do some of these, th show you the steps kind of quickly here. So the first thing is we need to create a counter. And a counter is just going to say, hey, I want to get the row of this. Now it starts at a 4. So if we want to make sure it always starts at a 1, just say the row of this minus uh, the row where the division is. So now we're going to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you always want to test these things out. Let's go up here, insert a row, and it still starts at 1. So the next part is this. We want to do what? We want to flag the first occurrence of each division. So if it's the first time that we see it, I want the number in this new column to be the same as our counter, which is going to make it easier for the final step. So we'll just copy this column header, paste it here, and this is, uh, let me just turn off the annoying filter. And is it the first one, right? Because this is the first one. Productivity, yes, we should see a one here. This is the first one, we should see a two. So when the numbers are the same, that means it's the first one. So I'm just going to grab this formula and copy and just put it into here and paste it. So now you see, whenever there's a, a number in this column D, it is the first time that we see something. So to prove that, I'm going to go over here to productivity, and I'm going to change this to, to uh, the word chess. I love playing chess. Watch that. See, now it's the first time that we see this word in here, so we get the 10, which is the same as the counter, 10. And finally, so these are all very simple steps. Uh, you could teach this to pretty much anyone. Final step now is we want to get these numbers out of this column D, and then the text that from the division that corresponds to these numbers. See, if we go all the way down here, let's just change this one and say test. So we get a number because we don't. this is the first time that we see the word test. And we want to get those numbers and then finally get the division. So this is our final formula. Uh, we're just going to take this, copy it, and put it right there. And press the Enter key. So really, it's about small. It starts off with small and says, just give me these numbers one by one, right? Using the rows as a counter. Give me the first number. It's like a 1, a 2, a 4, 7, 10. It keeps going like that. And then we wrap it with the index to say, hey, my answers come from column A. So now we're just going to drag this down. Uh, now we could put if error around this, but uh, fix it up a little bit more. But in the end, uh, this works, and it's fully dynamic. Let's put a testing. Let's say testing up here. Press Enter. We see it right there, and it is in the drop-down list. So this is also a nice way to do it, but it is the heaviest way. Now, finally, sometimes we overcomplicate things, and there could be a very simple way to do it. Mike Rempel reminded me of this in a recent post he had. There's two built-in features that can do this. If the goal here is simply to allow to keep the data clean and have a drop-down or something down here uh, so that people can pick the pick the from the unique values above, we could just say, you know what, autocomplete. Just type in the first letter, hit enter. Now, if there's two words that start with a U, 
and a T, you have to keep typing until it is unique, right? Or utility. Uh, and the last, the other thing here is the pick from drop-down list. Watch this. It already exists. If you are directly below your data and you're adding some new data, simply explain to someone, right-click, pick from drop-down list, pick one of those. Those are all the unique values above, and we many times complicate this. Let's test this out, and I'm going to say uh, Sudoku, like that. Sorry, I spelled it wrong. doesn't matter. But right-click. Uh, pick from drop-down list and it sees all of those values amazing so sometimes we don't even have to create all these things and we can have simple fast dynamic and light so in this case maybe Mike wins